Set Thieves. What a neat little charming co-op game. A mixture of puzzle, simulation and adventure. So I saw reviews on it and I thought, hmm, okay. I'm not sure if it's my thing. But then I, I had a go and <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. So should you try it? And what can you expect out of this pirate sailing and swashbuckling game? Well, first off, it's available through all the usual platforms, but it's also available on the Xbox Game Pass for PC, which I think is really great value. The Xbox app itself is really janky and slow, but that is a topic for later. For the first 30 minutes, hey, well, like I do this with most games, I, I just jumped in to try, have a go and, and play and see if we could work it out, my friend and I. And yet, yeah, no, that didn't work. Um, you need to have some instruction to play, but you don't need a lot. And I feel a large part of the game is, in any case, about exploring what you can do, what you can't do, exploring different parts of the island, exploring different parts of your ship. It's, it is a whole bunch of fun in that case in point. But, well, like this part here, we we're like looking for this, well, it said proposed voyage on the captain's table. <laughs> and for the longest time, we thought the map table was the captain's table. We we're like trying it. It's like, why isn't this working? Why is it not working? And yeah, uh, you go through the tutorial and um, it turns out that the voyage table is, yeah, well, it's just to the side. But still, it's uh, uh, still a whole bunch of fun trying it out, right? And nothing I need to be insulted about for not reading the instructions on things and... Right, so the basic premise of the game. The basic idea is, is you pick up the quest, you set sail to a destination, you reach the destination, do what's needed, usually combat a few baddies, set sail back to the main island or outpost and collect your reward. It's a really straightforward open world sandbox environment and normally I don't like open world games but I think what's in it in this co-op experience is the amount of things you have to coordinate, explore and work out things together is what makes it a fun and enjoyable experience. The tutorial, The Maiden's Voyage, is, is quite nice and short and it really gives a good introduction to the game on, on the basic controls and what you need to do. And you can play this game both with keyboard and mouse or controller. I, I still prefer keyboard and mouse for any first person games. But it's quite nice that when you pick up a controller all the relevant icons automatically switch. So you get to learn the basics of repairing a boat, using wood planks to plug up holes or repair certain parts. Because every time you, you hit something, <laughs> it springs a leak and uh, you'll go on to having to bail out your water, bail a few times and plug up the holes. <laughs> I presume if eventually when you hit so many things, uh, basically the bottom of the boat just all looks like wooden planks. and patch jobs which is quite fun and neat in itself. There's also the ship's cargo where you plunder islands to refresh its stock of wood, food or, or cannonballs or the sorts. I haven't yet run to the stage where I run out of wooden planks but I, I presume you, you eventually run out of these items and your boat will sink. And honestly this is one of those games where when things go wrong it's just as funny, if not more funny, than when the things are actually going right. Hey, and we're back. Did it. Yep, and the boat didn't even sink. Yeah. <laughs> Do some parking here. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I swear I don't remember swearing or cursing that much. Okay, let's talk about the combat. And I, I would say that the combat in this game is, well, it's completely serviceable. And w w it's as basic as you can get, really. You have the options of four different types of weapons. One, a sword, two, a pistol. Three, which is something like a shotgun, and four, something which is like a sniper rifle. And you only get to pick two of them. So there's a few of 
things in the environment which you can, like this gun barrel here, which you can set alight. <laughs> and purely, maybe not completely effectively as well, which adds to the comedy of this game. And <laughs> I made the mistake the first time round picking two guns because each gun only has five bullets and <laughs> once you run out of bullets you got no way to attack. But something about it, it's a mixture of the, the noise, the mixture of the swing of the sword. The sword also has this nice charge up feature where you hold down and you leap forward to do a strong attack. And well, and, and the shot of the gun, it's <laughs> they're really satisfying weapons to use. And also really fun to see these skeletons explode. The progression of the game. Well, there isn't any in terms of character development, which, well, I like it because I inherently like games where all players are on a level playing ground. All the progression really is, is, is cosmetic items. And it's only if you really want to grind, you can get some things to look a little bit fancier. And I'm gonna admit, uh, some of these jackets are pretty swanky, pretty cool. And I, I have found myself, it's like, I, oh yeah, I really want that. Oh, I really want that glove. I really want that jacket. But then also, I'm also very frugal. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not gonna pay for that. But yeah, instead of having a progression where you have a stronger character the longer you play, I, I like it. I guess the progression is you become better as a player, as a as a sailor at controlling the boat, controlling the cannon, fighting. And that's where the progression, which, which I like. The only thing closest to, I suppose, a leveling thing is there's multiple factions in the game who hand out the quest that, well, they call it the voyages. And as you do more quests, more voyages, you level up in those factions and then get access to what I assume more difficult quests. In that sense, that is the progression. With, with the end game, presumably, is, well, it's actually stated to level up and become a pirate legend by getting max level in three different factions. Oh, oh, there's a ghost oh, ship. Oh, ghost ship. Oh, actual ghost ship. Yeah, yeah, it's like full and came out of the water. I mean, how cool is that? This is stuff from like Pirates of the Caribbean or the stuff from stories and movies. So let's talk about boat combat. You get a couple cannons on each side of the boat, a couple harpoons on each side, and it's, it's about navigating the boat around. It's actually quite tricky to do, to, to try to navigate the boat to have the cannons aimed in the right direction. The harpoons on the front of the boat, they, they let you latch on to enemy boats and then when you latched on, you can use your cannons to fire at them. And using these cannons, it's, it's cool. Just like the pistol is the gun, it's, it's a really satisfying click as they shoot out. Satisfying explosion. And it, it's actually quite busy. There's quite a lot to do because as you're shooting, you're having to run around to reload, grab more cannonballs that you have to run around to maybe repair the hull of your boat because you're probably springing leaks and all that water to bail out and running back up to, to steer things so you can definitely see how you need to be coordinated with your fellow crewmates to keep well to keep the boat afloat and uh, I, I think the battle ended up going for about six to seven minutes so well, you can sort of see from these jumps that the weather the, the, the sunlight has changed it, it was a, it's a long battle but but a very enjoyable one as well especially when you nail that last shot And as the boat goes down, what will rise to the water's surface is chests and crates of our booty and gold doubloons. And you can't help but feel very piratey in that moment as you fish out and take the spoils out of the water. Oh, look, see if these, is, uh, is, it's been a pleasure to play, play this game. I would recommend setting aside at least, at least probably two hours per session that allows you to do a quest, to spend time sailing, to spend some time exploring and actually just messing around because there's a whole bunch of things just to 
just to mess around and have fun. Like, you get to play instruments, you know? Is that needed? No. Is it fun? Yes. You get to go fishing again. Needed? No, but yes, a lot of fun. And I'm really glad they added these extra little, little touches, which makes the game a whole bunch of fun to play. As always, thank you for watching. So I, I make gaming videos for, I don't know why, but I make them and if you like them, I've got some more. So please check them out. Many thanks and we'll see you again.